Good night, my beloved grandson. Wait, Grandad, before you go, would you uh, tell me a bedtime story? <sighs> a bedtime story? Man, it's been quite a few decades since I had to do that. Okay, how about the one about John Jackbo? John Jackbo? Who's, who's John Jackbo? Okay, get cozy, because this is going to take a while. To understand our story, we're first going to have to take it right back, way back before our story even begins. There was a group of outlaws, one of the biggest, most renowned bunch of bandits this world has ever seen. This group was made up of Old Joey Three-Face, Don Flamenco, Jonesy, the Governor, Graveyard Steve-O, now he was the head honcho, and our hero, John Jackbo the getaway driver. On one faithful day, the six of them went to do a bank heist. Now this, this was the biggest bank heist they'd ever pulled off, so they were very excited about this. The five boys, Joey, Steve-O, Don, Jonesy, and the governor, headed straight into the bank with John Jackbo outside running the engine in the 2004 Subaru Impreza. The job was done, the bag was got, they hopped in the car and drove away. Now, they were pursued by the police, chased down, cornered. They thought it was over. But what happened? Someone needed to go down for this. So they all turned to John Jackbo and said, Thanks for driving, John Jackbo. Graveyard Steve-O, he said it's your time. You don't do enough. You don't risk enough. You just you just drive that stupid car. John Jackbo kicked out the driving seat, pushed out the door by none other than Graveyard Steve-O. Left there, arrested, took down to court, found guilty, and left to rot in a prison cell for the rest of days. And that, my grandson, is where our story begins. One day, John Jackbo woke in his prison cell, and the Selkie was just there, just in his prison cell. So he, uh, well, did what anyone would do, unlocked the door and, and left. Uh, Grandad, are you sure that's what happened? That sounds a little bit ridiculous. Honestly? Yeah, that, that's exactly what happened. I wish I was lying, but the key was just in his cell. He made his way through the prison, encountering a few strange creatures en route, but nothing to be worried about, until he found a big guy, a very big guy, very, very big guy actually, who um, was kind enough just to let John Jackbo leave, uh, or something along those lines, anyway. But he he got past him, eventually, uh, walked walked out of the prison, and a big, a big crow appeared, and carried him away to a faraway land, where he would be safe. John Jackbo had a lot of time to think while he was flying to the promised land and grew vengeful. He wanted to get revenge on those who had wronged him. His former group of friends, the Banjo Boys, that was the name of the Outlaws by the way. How would he best his strong former allies? Well, he sucked out the help of no one but the devil. He was going to make a pact with the devil, no matter what it cost. As long as it would make him strong enough to accomplish whatever he set out to achieve. To get the revenge he needed, he lusted for, to get a taste of the blood of the Banjo Boys. So John Jackbo did what anyone would do, and he made his way to the devil, who was conveniently like five feet away from him, and he said to the devil, I will give you my soul and six of my toes in return for immortality and the power to slay any being with one single punch. The devil said, Six toes, bro? You, you can keep that crusty ass soul. Them six toes? Damn. That's kind of hot. Wish granted. You just you just go do that. John Jackbo explained that he needed to slay the Banjo Boys. And the devil, the devil understood. After what they put him through, he said, go straight ahead. And John Jackbo said, okay, I'm going to go finish some business with Graveyard Steve-O. So off he went. John Jackbo made his way through the catacombs, fighting off hordes and hordes of skeletons to get towards Graveyard Steve-O, but one thing clicked in John Jackbo's mind. This isn't Steve-O's domain, Steve-O's domain's next door. To get to Steve-O's domain, we have to go through Pin, Wheel, fucking Three-Faced Joey's domain, that's who we're going through. And that's another one on our list. So he made his way down and encountered Joey's henchman, Big Bones Magoo, this big fucking skeleton looking guy, and what did he do? He thought, I'm going to put my, my new skill to the test. And he punched him, and that guy evaporated. And that was when John Jackbo realized what he'd done. John Jackbo was no longer a human. He was a monster, and this made him happy. He continued to make his way through the catacombs until he eventually reached a room. It was a square room surrounded by cliff edges. He jumped into the room, and there he stood. No one else but Joey. John Jackbo said to Joey, I told you I would find you bastards. And Joey said, John Jackbo, it didn't have to be like this. 
I don't want to have to kill you, John Jackbook said. Ha! <laughs> you kill me? Okay, Joey. How about you catch this? You punched him. One punch, and Joey had been removed from this life. His existence annihilated by one single blow from John Jackbo. One less pest left on my list, said John Jackbo. As he continued towards Steve-O's domain, he made his way through the darkness. It's almost as if he could see in the dark, as if he'd been eating carrots or some shit. He made his way down, he descended, fighting these colossal bone titans on his way, until he got to the very bottom, and he found nothing but a piss yellow door. What? What is this piss yellow door? How can I not get to Steve-O? What's happening? What's happening? I told the devil I was coming here. How? How come I can't get- Nah, no, this'll never do. Steve-O the bastard. He's hidden himself from me. So John Jackbo made his way back to the surface. He needed to have a word with the devil. And when he eventually met with the devil, the devil told him. <laughs> John Jackbo. You thought I'd let you get what you want just for some toes? I have something I need accomplished too. I need you to go and slay the big guy Smo. He lives in Analondo. He's a big round gold guy. Again, off John Jackbo went. Now he wasn't quite sure where this Analondo thing was, or where to find the big Smo guy. But what he did know is his friend Darren knows everything. So John Jackbo set off, sifting through legions of dead guys, trying to stop him for whatever reason, to go and find his friend Darren, who lived just down the road conveniently. But as he was on his way, he went to cross a bridge between two towers, and he was jumped! Jumped by Jonesy! Jonesy stared him deep in the eyes and said, John Jackbo, you motherfucker, you killed Joey! And John Jackbo said, Jonesy, 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 wow, am I happy to find you, you boom! Punched him in the gut, straight through his liver, and he fucking exploded. Another one bites the dust. Uh, that's a little grotesque for a bedtime story, Grandad. Can we take it down a notch? I'm getting a little bit scared. Grow up. Our hero continued forward and finally found his friend Darren, staring off into the sunset, and he asked, Darren, how do I reach this big gold boy, Smo? He sounds like he's a long way away. Darren looked him deadpan in the eyes and said, Oh, you have to ring the bell. Well, both of the bells. There's a bell up there, where the gargoyles are. Those are good guys. They'll let you straight past. And then there's a bell straight down in hell, where uh, only the most beautiful babe in town lives. Uh, so ring both of those bells, and then you can go through the fortress, see the giant, and then you'll uh, end up in Analando, okay? John Jackbo did as his good friend Darren told him to. He ascended to the top of the tower to ring the bell, as he needed to ring both of them in order to get to Analando. But there were two little gargoyle guys standing in the way, and Darren said the good guys, so, um, just to walk up. <gasps> John! John Jackbo, what are you doing? No! No, John Jackbo! John Jackbo killed both of them spilling innocent blood all over the floor. He murdered both of the gargoyles so he could get to the bell and give it a big old ring. This is the beginning of John Jackbo's Joker arc. While John Jackbo was in the area, he remembered of a certain Don Flamenco who liked to dwell deep in the woods next to the gargoyle tower, so it would only be kind to pay him a visit. So John Jackbo made a quick detour into the woods Headed over to where the big dog resided, he walked in, headed towards the grave of Don Flamenco's best friend, and went to, uh, piss on it, which is, which is really bad behaviour actually, John Jackbo, I'm really disappointed in that. Anyway, Don Flamenco ran in and, uh, said, You're pissing on my friend's grave! What happened to you, John Jackbo? And John Jackbo said, I am no longer human, Don Flamenco. I am a god. Bow before me! And uh, he did a little backflip and punched him in the face and Don Flamenco died. Grandad, I don't actually think he did a backflip, did he? No, but it sounds cool. And with Don Flamenco crossed off his list, it was time for John Jackbo to go delving into the depths of hell. I know you have to get to bed soon, so I won't bore you with the exact details of John Jackbo's descent. But just know that on his way to Quaylax Town where she lives, he took the lives of two more innocent creatures. Why? Just for a shortcut. He could have walked, but he chose to take the express train, if you know what I'm saying. Just to get to that bell, two more creatures died. 
and that's what John Jackbo is like these days. He has no regard for human life, or demon life, or dragon life. It's absolutely disgusting. But anyway, he finally arrived at Quaylike's town. He made his way through the horrors of his goth girlfriend's domain until he finally reached her beautiful big egg sack. He walked in, and there she stood. Beautiful Quaylike, the girl of his dreams, waiting for him. With shame in his voice, John Jackbo looked at her and said, My dear, I am immortal, so you may beat me to your heart's content. And he took it. He took it like a man. He took it like he was born for it. Uh, this is a little bit weird. Anyway, he killed her. He killed Quaylike. That's... TLDR, he killed her. To get to the bell. He killed her. Then he walked through, and he, he rang the bell, okay? He rang, he rang the bell, and that's all that happened, okay? Um, okay, granddad. <laughs> John Jackbo seemed to remember his friend Darren mentioning a fortress and a big giant. Now, the only fortress John Jackbo could think of was Snake Castle. Now, Snake Castle is called Snake Castle for a reason. It's because it's full of snakes. And John Jackbo is terrified of snakes. But, that being said, he would do anything, anything at all, to get revenge on Graveyard Steve-O. So he made his way through Snake Castle until he reached the end and found the big giant he was informed about. Now the big giant seems like a nice guy. We've all seen the big friendly giant. We've all seen the one with the metal guy. And this giant's no different. He's a friendly guy. So John Jacko did what anyone would do and he killed him. Slayed him on the spot. Anyway, some bird people came and they, uh, they took him to guess where? Arnold Londo, we're here boys, where the devil sent us to. It's time to slay this goddamn big gold guy. As he was making his way through this place, John Jackpo couldn't help but think that it felt familiar. It reminded him of someone, but he couldn't quite put his finger on who. Was it one of his friends? Was it his dog? An ex-girlfriend? He, he, he wasn't quite sure. But he eventually made his way through this beautiful town, until he reached a big door. A huge door. A door bigger than you'll have ever seen in your entire life. He entered the door, and there he stood. The one they called Smoke. And his little, his little lion friend. But we don't talk about the lion friend. John Jackpo thought, this is, this is it. I killed this guy, and then I can go and get my revenge finally. Then I can rest. So he walked over. Well, he, he rolled a few times on the way. And he delivered a blow so powerful that it annihilated Smoke. It wasn't over. His little lion friend was enraged. He grew stronger, bigger, and vowed to annihilate the one who killed his comrade. And John Jackpo punched him and he died. <sighs> is this nearly over, Grand? I'm getting real tired now. Just sit tight. The best is yet to come. Just out of curiosity, he travelled forward to the next room and was met by a familiar face. It was Maria, the sister of one of the Banjo Boys. She looked him in the eyes, not knowing what had happened, and said, Oh, are you here to see the governor? He said, yes. Can you tell me where he is? Oh, he's under the stairs. What? He's under the stairs. Just You'll see what I mean. Go to the stairs. Just go down. He's under the stairs. So John Jackbo, well, did what she said. He went down under the stairs, and there was a big kind of round room with an open archway. He walked in, and there he stood. The coward. The governor. The governor saw John Jackbo and said, John. John, John Jackbo? What, what, what are you doing here? I've came for you, Governor, said John Jackbo. The Governor said, no, I, I'm not like the other guys. I know what you've done to the other three, but I'm not like them, I promise. Please, please spare me. And he started launching projectiles at John Jackbo. John Jackbo walking through them as if they weren't even grazing him. He went up to the Governor and said, you sly bastard. I know everything. You were the one encouraging him to push me out of the car. Don't try and act like we're friends. And he punched him, as John Jackpot does to anything that stands in his way. And the governor evaporated. Are you excited, grandson? He's gonna kill Steve-O. It's time. He's gonna go kill Steve-O. Yeah, I suppose so. So that was it. Only one name left on the list. Graveyard Steve-O. John Jackpot made the long journey back to the devil to tell him that he'd slain Smo. The devil said to him, I already know. I could feel his presence missing. I have opened up the piss yellow door, young Jackbo. Go forth and do what you were born to do. John Jackbo was confused and said, I, 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 I wasn't born to do this. I, I just gave you six of my toes. I don't know why. Yes, 
and they were delicious. Thank you. Now please just get out of my sight and go and kill the guy. I'm sick of this. This took you like so so long to kill Smo. Seriously, just. <sighs> John Jackpo knew there was only one thing left to do. He made his way to the bottom of the catacombs through the tomb of the giants using the teleport mechanism in the video game and reached where the piss yellow door once was. He made his way through, worked his way through a series of tunnels until there he was. Brave Yard Steve-o, John Jackbo said. Miss me, Steve-o? I bet you thought I'd never come. Steve-o said, I always knew you'd make it, John. I always did. I knew you had potential from day one. This was all just a test. A test to see if you'd make it. I'm so glad you're here. We, you know, we could do great things together. How about friends? Me and you friends. And he put his hand out to shake John Jackbo's hand. And John Jackbo too put his hand out and struck Steve-O with the strongest punch this world has ever seen. And Steve-O exploded. And John Jackbo said, Finally. I can rest. But what happened to John Jackbo, Grandad? Where is he now? Well, Grandson, they say he still walks the earth to this day, and he accomplished many good things, but I guess that may be a story for another time. I love you, Grandad. Thank you.